From Reminder Media, this is Stay Paid, a sales and marketing podcast on a mission to help you close more deals and retain more business. Hosted by the VP of Marketing, Josh Steik, and Reminder Media's president, Luke Akery. So get ready to hear the golden nuggets that will allow you to live a life of freedom tomorrow, but only if you take action today. I was at the Sixers yeah. game last night. Tell some, everybody something terrible because they were playing the uh, Detroit Pistons. And well, they closed Wells Fargo now. Yeah, they closed that. But they came out at one point, and the people beside me, you know, we're lucky enough to sit courtside, and the people beside me leaned over and said, hey, did you just hear what they said? They took an NBA player back. I, ca- I couldn't see who it was. But they were like, they just took him back to get tested for the it coronavirus. Jazz player, right? No, because he uh, had defended mm. the Jazz player. Oh, gotcha. he, or he had been, you know, up against them defense-wise a couple nights before. Oh, so no. I was like, oh, great. So the rest of you guys, I told my staff this. They were asking me this about the coronavirus today. Hey, what do we do, <laughs> yeah. Luke? And Keep I said, working. guys, we're going to quarantine ourselves in the office. Yeah. <laughs> bunker, bunker down. Wow. <laughs> we're just going to keep calling. We're going to keep hammering the phones. We're going to quarantine ourselves. We're going to keep producing. Keep marketing. Hey, persistence. That's that's what it yeah. is, right? There's something like that. Some book on that it has to be. So, yeah. <laughs> so there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. You know, this has come out a month after, but that's my thoughts on the coronavirus. I think it's freaking crazy. It's dude, it's crazy. Speaking of crazy, no, I don't know. This, I just. Usually my segues are pretty good, but yeah. this this is good. This is crazy good. We have yeah. been asking our listeners to leave us some reviews, and we got one in from James Carberry. This comes from Apple Podcast. Five stars. Love it. The title is Josh and Luke's Energy is Infectious. Love what these two are doing with this podcast. Incredible passion and genuinely helpful content. Thank you, James, for helping us out, giving us five stars. James is going to be on the podcast, actually. You know, you know what you, your segue should have been? What? Talk about infectious. Talk about infectious. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been the marketing segue for you. I missed it. Talk I about missed infectious. It. All right. Listen well, to this review. <laughs> Today, we have an awesome guest here on the show. We're really going to dig into marketing mm-hmm. um, on this show. We talk about a lot of sales, and we have a lot of producers on here. We, we, have a, we have a marketing expert on here for this show. His name is Eric Sue. He's the CEO of digital marketing agency, Sing. Single Grain and co-founder of ClickFlow, an SEO tool that saves you time and tracks your revenue. Apart from running his multiple businesses, Eric hosts two podcasts, Marketing School with Neil Patel and Leveling Up, an entrepreneurial podcast where he dissects growth levers that help businesses scale. Eric, welcome to Stay Paid. Thanks for being here. Yeah, thanks for having me, guys. Yeah, Eric, it's awesome to have you on the show, man. There's so many avenues we could talk about today, so I'm excited to pick your brain on really your best marketing tips, what you see happening in the industry today, specifically for small business owners. But if you could kind of introduce yourself to the audience, let them know about your journey. How did you get to where you're at today? Yeah, so wow. Um, let's see, where do I go with that? I, I think I'll, I'll start with the the overarching mission that um, I didn't realize was a mission until, I guess, you know, now... But when I was a kid playing games growing up, um, I kind of did esports before it became a thing, and um, I always thought, look, if I can play, you know, games competitively, like you know, Counter Strike, Starcraft, and all that, if I can just take this mentality and apply it to something that's real uh, in real life, um, that'd be great. And I didn't realize it eventually would be become business. So my my ultimate goal, you know, it's a very unrealistic, unachievable mission, is to to help the entire world level up. But that gives me a lot of um, rope to do kind of whatever I want to, to get there. So, um, yeah, my story is, I mean, you did a really good intro Luke on, on kind of what I'm working on right now, but, um, yeah, I mean, ultimately it's, it's to continue to, you know, grow their audience. Bill Gates said, you know, every company needs to become a media company said that in 90. So mm-hmm. I think you build the audience first and then you start to, you know, you start to build businesses and you start to buy businesses around that. So that's what I'm working on right now. And honestly, it feels like it's all a game. Well, you know, it's so funny. It's like um, I tell real estate agents this, financial advisors, is that you have to be a great marketer because it does you no good to be a great financial advisor if no one knows about you. It does you no good to be a great real estate agent. You might be the best in the world at finding the deal, but if no one knows that you're the best in the world at that, you don't help anybody. So every business owner really has to learn the art and be a great marketer so they can spread that message. So I guess talk to me a little bit about growing your business. Like, How did you get into business? Um, The first company you started, how did that process go and how did you grow it? The first couple of companies I had were complete failures. I, I learned a lot. Um, I mean, I had an e-commerce company that sold magic, uh, magic um, <laughs> items. <laughs> <That's ads. awesome. laughs> so, 
you know, that, you know, tank that company and I had some other stuff going on too. But, um, my first real shot was actually, um, taking over this, this ad agency called single grain. Um, and I actually, the, the funny story around that is, um, I bought the, the company for $2 out of pocket and then scaled it into <laughs> what it is today. But so th- there's a lesson there, right? It's, yeah, seriously. it's in real estate buy low, you make money on the buy. I mean, you see, you sell high, but forget about selling high. Just try to make money on the buy first. There's no way I could lose money there besides learning a lot. And so I thought that was, that was worth could you, it. And, how did you do that? Like you, you bought the company literally for $2. Yeah. So here's what happened. So I basically was working at a tech startup, leading the marketing team. And then, um, my, my buddy, uh, Neil, that, that I do the podcast with, he's like, Hey, why don't you come help save this, this company? So uh, I learned a lot from that startup. Was we had great people, great product, and was able to turn the company around with great marketing. That's all I had to do there. Um, now this company was I had to learn everything around business, right? So came into the company as a number two, became the chief operating officer, um, and then you know basically what was going on was we were an SEO company. Google was making all these changes to its algorithms, so all the work we we were doing was it became invalid. A year goes by, and then. Um, the four other partners, so there's it's one yellow guy, me, and it's four brown people, uh, four Indian people, <laughs> Neil's included. That's and true. then, uh, you know, Neil's like, dude, you should get out. We're all getting out right now. You know, you, there's no brand equity, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, look, I think I can make something happen with this. Biggest upside for me is it becomes something and I learn a lot. Biggest downside is, you know, I, I learn a lot, right? Mm. So um, basically, that's a golden said, hey, nugget there. That's huge. Neil, I want your shares for $1. And I'll, uh, so he owned ten percent of the company. Another dollar for his, his the other partner, ten percent, and the rest were paid through the profits of of the company. So what you're really looking for all the time when you're doing a deal is not to always try to negotiate on price. That's important, but uh, the terms of the deal, right? How do you make the terms work? And I said a contingency, saying if the company failed, I would owe nothing, right? So there's really not that much downside for me. Hmm. Dude, that's a fantastic. You're like the uh, negotiating king. $2. Uh, so what did I you got dr- lucky. <laughs> yeah, you got lucky. Yeah, sure. Well, right place, right time. And, you know, Richard Branson, yeah. isn't he the one that says when an opportunity comes, you just say yes and figure it out mm-hmm. yeah, afterwards, 100%. right? You just say yes. So tell, I guess, tell us a little bit about where you took that company to. Like, was it a failure and learn from it or did it, was it a success and learn from it? Yeah, I'll tell you. I mean, the first year was a complete failure. I had no idea what I was doing. We dropped all the way down to to one employee. Um, I was the outside accounting firm I was working with called me and said, "Hey, I think it might be time to shut it down." So when you get a call like that, it, it's it's very sobering. And I, I, I came this close to getting a a, a full time job. Um, thank God I didn't because it just didn't feel right to me. But um, yeah, you know, I said, "Hey, I'm gonna give it a real go." And um, you know, we focused on on the company. And then um, yeah, I mean, you know, today we we got a, I can see my off office from here. We're, we're in downtown LA. Um, but yeah, you know, multiple seven figures a year. And then that's led to actually me um, being able to parlay that into all the other projects I work on that um, that are growing very quickly. Um, so yeah, it fortunately it worked out. It was a long, hard slog. But um, yeah, it, um, yeah, it worked out how I wanted it to work out. Yeah, that's awesome. Congrats. Congrats on that. Thanks. Seriously. So let's let's talk about marketing a little bit. I know you're, you're a digital marketing agency. You do you have a daily marketing podcast where you guys drop a lot of like really great tips and tricks and kind of like these lists and what's going on in the marketing world. What's what's sort of on your mind today in the world of marketing or digital marketing? Yeah, I, I think the biggest thing is um, looking at, you know, Warren Buffett always talks about building a moat. So, you know, if all the marketers around are, you know, they're they're giving eBooks away or, you know, they're um, they're doing infographics. These are all marketing tactics, right? That everyone copies. Mm-hmm. How can you differentiate yourself from what all the other people are doing right now? So what Neil and I on, on the Marketing School podcast, he's my, my co-host, we, we, we talk about a concept called product-led growth. So I'd recommend people Google that. But the whole idea is you build a product and you give it away for free. Yep, you might have a freemium aspect to it where people can just access, you know, basic features. And then they can start paying for it later if they want. Now, what you're trying to do there is, A, you're building a moat because a product's not that easy to just kind of imitate, right? Um, the second thing is, if it's free, a lot of people are going to talk about it, right? You're going to get word of mouth. Third thing is, from an SEO perspective, you're going to get a lot of links coming to that tool, right? Mm. Um, so it, it becomes a self-perpetuating marketing machine, um, and that ultimately sets you apart from other people. Now, if you're in real estate, you might build um, some type of calculator. You can use Outgrow, like a, a tool called Outgrow.co. You can they allow you to build a bunch of calculators, right? Um, or you can build a tool that is specific to your audience. And you can easily go to a website like 1kprojects.com or uh, codecanyon.net. These two websites, you can get projects for very cheap or um, hire, you know, 
um, or, or buy a product that developers have thrown away. So there's a lot of wow. easy ways to get started. People just make excuses and they try to get, they try to do the easy stuff that everyone else is talking about. That's one thing. Mm, yeah. Amen to that. That's a, that is a cold that, night. People <laughs> make excuses trying to do the easy thing. That's the <laughs> truth, man. It's like I, I shared with my sales manager today, everybody who's following along with our journey and stuff. And I just was telling them about, you know, it's about accountability. It's about discipline, all these things. And I said, look around. I said, nobody has a six pack around us, but all of us could have a six pack. <laughs> I actually think yeah. I shared this with you guys too, the Ariel and Andrea. Everybody could have a six pack, but no one does. Why? You, you know how to it's get it. It's simple. Yeah. <laughs> Eat healthy, go to the gym, like you could, but you don't. And that's like business. It's like, yes, business is maybe a little bit more complicated, but not really. It is really just the discipline. People make excuses. They don't consistently go, you know, and actually implement something and stick with it. That's one of the major problems. You, you want a business six pack, not a business one pack. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I love, that's the quote of the podcast right there. Someone marked that spot. Now, that's the truth. So I guess walk us through, you know, so obviously building a product-led strategy to get leads in the door and, and to grow your company. I guess walk us through, in, you know, for me, what does that look like from a funnel perspective? And how do you turn those people into actual clients? So, you know, I think of my company, Reminder Media, and I go, okay, how do I do a product-led strategy for, for you know free, and how do you funnel it? What are the natural parts of the funnel, and what do you try to set up for people in that flow? So with our software, ClickFlow, it's um it, you know it, we it, it's content intelligence software, right? It's software that helps you grow your organic traffic. And so what we do is we have a couple of free options that people can access. And once you go and you, op you, you try to access the free option, we might have some call to action saying, hey, um, do you want help actually doing this? Um, which might lead over to the agency I have, Single Grain. Um, or it might say, hey, you know, upgrade here to you know, get additional features or, or to get more usage from the, the software. So um, to answer your funnel question, um, our software starts at the top of the funnel and we can, you know, we can drive traffic to it if we want. Like if the numbers actually work, then we can drive traffic to it. And we have all these upsells and cross sells that are, that are within the tool, right? Um, a good example of this is actually, if you go check out HubSpot, their entire software is, is free right now. They have, they have a bunch of locks where you mm. can upgrade in the software. It's very strategically placed. Um, Uber suggests, which is Neil's tool. That's another good example too, um, where there's a lot of locks and upgrades in there, right? Um, but you start that at the, the top of the funnel and then you can, you can strategically place you know, other elements, uh, call the actions within the product, or you can also market to them um, using you know, email software or follow-up um, you know, chat program like Intercom to just keep up with them. Nice. Yeah, you, you mentioned email. You mentioned some of these things that people should be focusing on. Where should, uh, if you're a business owner, right, you're running the business, let's say then you're also having to do your marketing. Where should you be spending yep. your time? Is it is it in the email? Is it in the Facebook ads? Is it in SEO? Yeah. Where should the time be invested to see the most, you talked about exponential, uh, exponential growth uh, earlier. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, look, when, when I was trying to save single grain, this is probably not the the, the most ideal answer, but I think um, I'm just thinking about it from, from the perspective of uh, very early days. You kind of have to do it all. So when the company was on fire, um, I started my first podcast. This was about six years ago or maybe even seven years ago. I started the leveling up podcast. Um, I was spending six hours a week on that while I was trying to save the company. Um, and, you know, that led to exponential compounded growth because, you know, I was spending six hours on it. Um, the first year I was only getting, uh, what is it? Nine downloads a day. So pitiful. And then the, the second I year that. I was only I getting that, Eric. 30 <laughs> downloads a day, right? That's great. Yeah. I remember those days. It, it took time to get to where we are now, which is cumulatively with the two podcasts, we're at about uh, 1.3 million downloads per month. Wow. Um, but th it took Jeez, time to get amazing. there. And it wouldn't have happened if I didn't stick with it, right? So I think um, it's finding a media property or a medium that you're good at, it, whether it's uh, blogging, video, or podcast. Um, understanding that it's probably like a two to three year journey to even start to see it get somewhere. And then you're starting, you're running your business at the same time. Now, if you want immediate support, if it's like, I need to go get money tomorrow, what I would say is, man, you, you better go out there and, um, you know, th there's one, I, I would do a webinar, right? One thing you could do is you can say, hey guys, um, I have, I'm trying to think about it from the perspective of a real estate agent, but I don't think I, I can because I'm not one. <laughs> but um, I'm just going to go back to my niche. Let's say I'm targeting uh, 
course creators or something like that. Hey, course creators, I, what if I built something? What if I built a funnel for you tomorrow that could b- bring sales on autopilot, um, could do this, could do that, you know, three benefits and say, who would be interested, all right? So you send that to your email list, you send that to your friends, you send it to social media, you're gonna get a, get a couple of bites there and then hopefully you can put put uh, an offer in front of them. You can get them on a sales call um, and, then, and then go that way. So I just gave two ways. One's the long-term way. If you need sales kind of immediately, you go down the webinar route. Um, and then you try to, you know, knock on doors and get as many as you can quickly. What are some of the biggest trends that you're seeing this year in 2020 from a marketing perspective? Like where are we headed? If you can put your prognosticator hat on. <laughs> I think one thing you're going to see more of, you're already seeing it Instagram stories. You're already seeing it. I, I mean, it's just stories in general. So Twitter's coming out with stories. LinkedIn's coming out with stories. Um, LinkedIn's organic reach is great. So I think mm-hmm. especially for it's real fantastic. estate agents, um, just don't write all the broetry stuff out there that you see. It's like, oh, you know, uh, bro-a-tree? I, you know <laughs> yeah, it, it's basically, I'll give you an example. Uh, you know, yesterday or, you know, 10 years ago, I was down and, you know, my business was on fire. I got divorced, blah, blah, blah. And today, you know, I am a multi-billionaire and <laughs> that, that just provides no value, right? Everyone's like, you I know, it's, it's like a happy party. It's just like, dude, <laughs> what do you do? Like, so no good. value. That's yeah, so it, it's true. so stupid. It, it has, yeah, so, it's so common now. Yep. And, it's but like it worked for a minute. Value, it got engagement. It got shares. And it's the same thing yeah. we do. All, we us marketers, like we just destroy every new idea yeah, it's because almost the new clickbait. One person does it. It's interesting. It gets a ton of engagement, and then it's everywhere. And then it becomes you don't hear 100%. it anymore. Yeah, bro, yeah, it's, it's terrible. <laughs> but um, I'll tell you what. What works on LinkedIn it actually carries over from Instagram. So I interviewed this guy named Christo, and he, he is, his Instagram grows by like um, ten thousand a week or ten thousand a day, something like that, Jeez. organically. And um, he does these carousels. So a carousel is basically like one image post and it might be followed up by four or five image posts where you can kind of swipe and, and go buy on it. Um, on LinkedIn, when, when we repost it there, the reach is three to four times higher. And so I would say if you can you know, do carousels, you can use something like Canva and then um, you do carousels and then you post it to Instagram, you post it to LinkedIn. Those do really well. And then I would say, um, podcasting right now is just, I mean, you guys are sitting there doing a podcast. I'm doing a podcast. Um, I, it's so good that I'm doing two podcasts. I just think that's the biggest opportunity right now because there are 700,000 podcasts in the world. There's over a billion websites, right? I mean, a billion is a thousand million. Let's put that into perspective. Podcast wow. is not even there yet. So, um, that's, interesting. you know, yeah, seriously. When I, when I look at the numbers and by the way, you guys like your setup is amazing. You guys like, I, I wish we had a setup like that. We used to do um, this in a closet. A, this, this, yeah, we did. We yeah, I'm, I'm in, in a closet, closet right now. We're still, <laughs> we're still kind of We in a started closet. in a closet. I mean, this is kind of a closet. If you saw behind us, you know, it's the magic yeah. of video. But <laughs> well, I'll tell you what. I mean, I'm happy to share numbers with you guys. I mean, the podcast to me is such high leverage because pe- advertisers are willing to pay a premium. I mean, we just shared numbers on our, our annual deal for our podcast. It's, you know, it's, it's healthy. It's about 720 grand for the year and it's an annual deal. Um, and it's, look, it's two people working on it. Right. And then, um, you know, the, the other thing is we have, we, I hate using the word mastermind, but we have a mastermind and, um, you know, we get to curate who we want in the group and then people pay, you know, um, you know, a decent ticket price for that about 25 grand. And then in addition to that, we're planning to add a subscription to our podcast too. So there's so many ways to use your podcast to not only build a community, but to use the funds, like to me, forget, you know, trying to, you know, um, go celebrate off in the sunset with the money. Mm. It's more so I'm, that's my funding. That's my funding to go build all the other, other stuff I want to build. So I just think, you know, uh, looking at podcasts right now or whatever media platform that you can grow, you can leverage that into so many other things and you don't need to be like, oh, let's go look at TechCrunch and look at how much money people raise. It's like, how about you go raise your own money? Man, I love that. So you talked about stories. What do you think people should be posting? Like that's the number one thing we get, especially from small business owners, like financial advisors, real estate agents, insurance agents. Like what do I post in my stories? What, what are you seeing gets engagement? <clears throat> yeah, I mean, I'm pretty terrible at it. Um, so <laughs> Same well, here, brother. I, I, I feel you. Same I'm probably here. not the... I'm probably not the best person to ask, but what I would say is this. I think if I were, because when LinkedIn comes out with stories, I think I'm going to do it all day. Um, I would just share tactical. I would almost look at it as, um, you know, step one, two, three, four, five, because the story is only 15 seconds each, right? Mm-hmm. So, um, but I would try to, what I would do is I would repurpose a lot of the content that I make. So marketing school, we have a new episode that comes out every day. I would just take that snippet, take out the, the key takeaway and just do like a, a one minute story, which is just four, um, four slides 
and then um, post it up there. Because what I'm trying to do is I'm just trying to share and then bring more value to people. So whatever you can teach people, I mean, um, you know, Graham Stephan's always a good example, right? That guy's always teaching stuff on YouTube. So mm. um, I would just, yeah, think about not, not, not about me, but how I can add value to other people. And the, the thing, um, not at, this is kind of separate from your question, but um, not enough people think about repurposing their content. Yeah. So once you produce something, think about how we can take this video right now, chop it up into different pieces, and then make it a podcast. You know, put it to different, um, put it onto different uh, platforms. But that's also a huge opportunity. Yeah, yeah, we see that, and actually, we talked about that on our social yesterday is making sure we're repurposing in our social media but meeting. The, the best point in there was don't think about you think about others yeah when That's adding so when, hard to when do. giving value yeah, it's so hard yeah. to do. right don't make the videos that you want to see necessarily yep. give the video or talking about yourself yep. think about what the people that are following you are out there would be able to learn from so th- speaking about um kind of learning and and i know that you're you're a big kind of student of marketing and everything who should people be following what are some people that uh, uh, thought leaders or people in marketing that, that we should be following right now? Yeah, we just did a podcast on this that came out yesterday, I believe. And then I think it's, yeah, I'm just reading it right now. Um, so these are the seven marketing geniuses you should pay attention to in 2020. So Ryan Bonici, <laughs> who's from uh, G2. Oh, there's two people from G2, which is a software review company. Mm. Kevin Indig, he's really good at, um, he's really good at SEO. Uh, Russell Brunson from ClickFunnels. Yep. Um, I'm sure you guys probably talk about him. Um, there's uh, Gary V. I like what he does with all his content. Uh, one guy that used to work for me works for him now. Um, there's another um, CMO of a company called Nextiva. His name his name is Yaniv Masjedi. Hmm. Um, so these are just a couple of people that you can follow. Nice. No, that's awesome. So I'm curious myself. You guys release a podcast every day for 10 minutes, right? You know, or mm-hmm. you know, somewhere around there. Why did you guys go daily versus weekly? Because I'm thinking about yeah. our own podcast, and we have a bunch of listeners that are trying to do podcasts as well. But um, why did you guys choose that? Because so many people, there's a lot of noise right now. Everyone's creating content. Um, the question is, how do you zig when other people are zagging? So we knew that if we went daily, um, not only would our our overall output per month, our volume per month would go up in terms of downloads. But um, it would just be very different, right? They're, they're short. Instead of the, the long form interview format, um, which I have on the Leveling Up podcast, which might go for 45 minutes to an hour, um, a lot of people are doing that. So it's like, okay, what can we do that's a little different? So let's, let's go very short. Let's go daily instead. And then we, the feedback's been tremendous. I mean, people are just like, I love the daily, um, the late, the daily kind of you know, snippets because I can just kind of get on with my day, you know, take your tactic and execute on it, right? So you know, that's what it was. Content marketing, right? So we do content marketing, right? That's one of our niches here in, in kind of our product. When you see content marketing for you know business owners, we tend to guide, and I'm curious to get your thoughts, is we tend to guide people that goes, hey, look, you don't want to just produce content that's just about your business, transactional-based content. You want to produce content that actually is more relevant you know, and for us specifically, we provide a medium for real estate agents, insurance agents to share lifestyle content, content that your clients would just enjoy getting from you and not stuff that just says, oh, you know, here's what the market's doing or here's what the mortgage rates are going on. How do you coach people in the content creation game of how much should be their product based content? How much should be just totally just lifestyle value driven content? Do you have any thoughts on that? Yeah, so I think um, the 80-20 rule does really well here. I, mean, I think um, you know 80%, maybe even 90% of your content is just genuinely helpful. Um, you know, content that people would be searching for. You can use a tool like Uber Suggest, which will allow you to do keyword research for free, um, and just look at what the volume is. Um, what I would do is I would try to search for keywords that have volume, and then just try to you know make make a piece that's uh, 10x times better than whatever it's ranking in Google. Let's say you're writing a blog post. Um, but that, that's how I would, I would think about content marketing in today's day and age because it's, it's, um, it's, to, it's hard to stand out. And I, it what was really your question is. directly again? <laughs> well, the, but I, you answered it there. It's like that's what I've yeah. actually uh, teach or taught people is like kind of that 80-20. I've used that exact same type Got it. saying of, hey, 80% should actually be not about you at all. It shouldn't mm-hmm. be about, about your, your product, business, right. your business that you're doing. It actually should just be more engaging. I tend to classify it in like three E's for my real estate agent stuff, which is like entertaining content, educational content, or I call it endearing content, where it's something that endears you 
you to the person. There's more of a human side of it. It's Maybe a relationship. It's a charity yeah. or I, I mean, it could be in the that's awesome. It could be, but that's kind of how I classify it. Uh, for people yeah. and you want to focus there on the three E's. Uh, but it's so hard with content because what you're saying is so true. It's the noise. Everybody, because there's people like us and there's people like you, we both have marketing companies, right? And we're educating people and giving and we're trying to give value and we're coaching people to give value. So there's so much noise out there in content marketing. And I've really thought that, okay, the future is really relevancy, is how relevant can you get to the consumer you're giving the piece of content to? Meaning the more relevant, the more personalized you can become, the better. And this is kind of where our organization is moving to. How do we get it down all the way to the actual client themselves, where you know about that client, you know their likes and interests, and you serve them up? I mean, heck, this is what ads are doing online and Facebook, so why not do it with content marketing? That's kind of where well, my it's, thoughts. It's have why been. niching down has become so important. You know, finding that that very tight niche that you can connect with people on because there's so much. Seven hundred thousand podcasts sounds like a lot until you compare it to the number of web pages. Yeah, I know. Seriously, the, the yeah. websites that are out there, the podcasts. <laughs> it's finding that niche. You will build an audience. Birds of a feather flock together. Your your vibe builds your tribe. There's all kinds of things. It, it really say is. With that. I like that. Do, do you prospect um, uh, phone calls wise or like do you have because obviously a lot of what you do is um, bringing people into your funnel and nurturing them. Right. And you do that through the podcasting, content marketing, all that stuff. Do you got do you have any prospecting side of your business, phone calls or anything like that going on? So this um I'm not sure how practical this is for, for your audience, but here's one thing we do um, because our blog gets a decent amount of traffic. Um, and you know, it's, it's not like we can do this overnight. Right. So w- when I first took over the company, we we're getting about 4,000 visits a month. Now we're about 250,000 visits a month. Um, but again, compounding growth, you continue to produce useful content. You, you look at the feedback from people, you continue to iterate on it. Um, and it'll take you a couple of years to get there. But once you're producing that level of organic traffic or SEO traffic coming to your site, um, the beauty of it is actually even whoever hitting my site, we use a uh, customer data platform. So um, we use a company called whole.io, that's H-U-L-L.io. And what it basically does is it will look at every single IP address that hits our website and it'll notice, it'll say, hey, we set a rule that says if anybody from an enterprise company that hits our website twice, um, any you know IP address, if we notice that two of them hit our site, um, we'll automatically uncover four people from their marketing team and we'll drop them into a, a sales enablement tool that we use called Outreach. That's and I'll send incredible. them like, hey, we have a free t- for you over here, uh, would you be interested in checking out? Or hey, you know, we're doing a personalized one-on-one webinar. Um, we actually made this just for you. Would you be interested in it? Right. So it does it automatically, um, where we actually save a lot of time and effort um, from having to do it manually. Dude, that's awesome. So wait, can you say that website again? What was the yeah? Web- H U L L dot I O whole. That's awesome. So it will track the IP address hitting your site. And if it hits it, so can you, do you have like the ability to set the criteria of how many times before it triggers and all that stuff? Yeah, it's very, uh, and by the way, I'm only giving you one use case for, from a CDP. I think a lot, a lot of people are not thinking about how to leverage the data that they have. So basically what it does is it's one single source of truth from all, let's say you're using, you know, one CRM here, you're using a telephone thing. Let's say you're using, I don't know, um, Facebook ads or whatever, it's going to connect all the data into one and you can filter it however you want to filter it. Um, there's a lot of different ways to skin a cat there. That's awesome. So Josh and I, we're trying, we have about a hundred, a little over a hundred people on the phones and we are trying to master this idea of, so we do a ton of content marketing. We do a ton of nurturing and really trying to master what's the art of when you should talk to the person versus the, in the triggers, as you would say, if this person has hit your site this many times, pick up the phone, call Call them, introduce yourself, make sure. And what's the, you know, we're just now talking about top of funnels and, and having a caller introduce themselves so the person has more of a face and feel and human side to the company than just nurturing them through email and kind of that balance. So I love that. I'm going to have to t- check out that tool. Yeah, Josh is like, sure. uh-oh. We're going to start using that tool. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> That's freaking awesome, man. All right. So I, I have so many questions, man. I could pick your uh, brain for days, but I want to ask you this. You're super successful, right? You have, you know, a company that's super successful. You're doing a bunch of great stuff with the podcasting. You know, when you look at the routines in your life, because I'm a self-help junkie, meaning like I, I'm into the Tony Robbins guys. I'm into all that stuff to try to help myself become better, be, be the best version, as you would say. What are the routines that you have implemented in your life that has really driven success for you? 
Yeah, well, first, thanks for the comment. Uh, I think it's, it's uh, you know, trying to work through the journey of becoming super successful. So working towards it. But um, yeah, I, I think for me, when I think about, uh, and I'm trying not to give you, you know, the answers that you hear on every single podcast <laughs> out there. So I'll give you some some different things, I think, that, that should be helpful. Um, one thing I try to do is buy my time. And some people think I, I'm lazy for it. So, you know, when some people come over to my house, like my, my fridge literally just has like, you know, um, some water bottles in there and like, that's it. <laughs> I used to have a cook. Um, so a cook would basically, um, you know, drop food off at my door and then basically I would just, you know, put it in my fridge. Right. Um, but you know, downstairs from where I live in downtown LA right now, there's actually a salad place called sweet green. And I, I just, nice. you know, you know, order there all the time, but that saves me a ton. Uh, that saves me a ton of, um, it's not really costly. It saves me a ton of time too. I think about, you know, how else can I buy back my time, right? It's constantly like, you know, who it's more so every single problem I have now, it's who can solve the problem. Like if you start to get to a level where you start to build a compounding kind of business machine, you start to think about who can solve my problem, right? So that kind of goes into recruiting, but going into personal habits, um, I wear an aura ring when I go to bed. So I track my sleep. Mm. I have a chili pad under my bed and that, that cools my bed. I sleep at 60 68 degrees or so. So I used to sleep without the AC on and I ha would have to get up to pee like four times a night, which is crazy. Now mm. when I have the AC on, I don't get up to pee anymore, right? Wow. Um, so my sleep is way better now. I, I use these bamboo blankets um, and then I wear the silk sleep <laughs> I mask. I want a chili pad. Yeah, seriously, I'm going to look into this. I have terrible sleep. Yeah. That's Dude, I'm telling you guys. So this, this is just I'm only the only habit I'm going to give you is a sleep funnel that I have, right? <laughs> yeah. So a chili <laughs> pad, great. That's the a slip silk mitt, uh, mask. You can get that on Amazon. It's like fifty bucks or so. Um, and then the Aura ring. That's O U R A. And then um, get these bamboo blankets. You can just find anything out there. And then um, oh, and I have this this, this uh, air purifier called the Allen purifier. It's A L E N. I no longer sneeze in my bedroom. So. Hmm. Those five things right there, that should be more than enough. Dude, I love it. That I tell you what, that's unique. We have that not had any awesome. of those yet. More, yeah. Normally, it's like, I wake up early. I go yeah, to I, med I, I meditate. meditate. <laughs> that's what it, he's gotten yeah, the same yeah. answers we've gotten. Man, get, <laughs> yeah, get your you sleep in order. Your that's day's going to so be good. Great. All right, so what would you go back? What advice would you give your younger self, right? That 13-year-old boy or whatever. You know, it doesn't matter the specific yeah. age. But what advice would you yeah. go back and give them? So this is going to be a generic answer, but I think it's it's very applicable. I think that the older I get, I guess the wiser you get. Um, so it's, you know, it, we're all impatient. I think we're always impatient. We want things to happen like yesterday. Um, but I've just realized like as I've continued to cultivate good habits and I've just kind of, you know, stayed the course, things just gradually fall into place. You might hit some bumps around the uh, in, in the road, but like I have realized, you know, you just need to stay patient and you need to, just, it's, it's not, it's two things. If you stay patient and you stay consistent with it, mm. no matter what, like if you're listening to this podcast, you're going to hit success. I, I just, don't, mm. I, I don't think there's any way you fail. I yeah. totally agree, man. Now, so many people I think associate patience with like inactivity or lack of action, but you, you added in the stay consistent, stay consistent, keep pushing along with the patients. We're learning that now, you know, with content. Oh my gosh. We're learning that in yeah. terms of it's like two and a half years of yeah. really going, I feel like we've been going hard, but we've been really probably going weak, going hard. And it's just like, and, and, and we, find our, yeah, we find ourselves like, oh, people aren't engaging at the rate we would want them to. You know, yeah. that type of, you start having a self-pity party. It's, it's never good enough. Yeah, it's never good enough. Yeah. It's so crazy. Yeah. You know, it's funny though, I've shared this on the podcast before. My wife's grandfather, you know, and he's, you know, in the latter years of his life now, but super successful guy. Uh, one of those people that, you don't realize this house. You know, the really successful people, yeah, they don't, don't drive. Fan I think he drives a Subaru and the guy's like worth crazy amounts of money. But, you know, super successful, was in agriculture, had like one of the largest orchards and all this stuff. And his I asked him one time, I said, you know, what's your you know piece of advice? What, what's your greatest piece of advice? And he goes, you know what? As you wake up, just keep putting one foot in front of the other. So I just, love it. Just keep putting one foot in front of the other keep moving. every day. And, and that's the truth. That's mm -hmm. what you find out. There's, there's no magic formula. You just keep going. So yeah. I think that's great advice, man. Eric, thanks that. so much for being here, being on the podcast. Before we close out, how can people find you and your companies? Yeah. Um, if you, you could just listen to the Leveling Up podcast. You can just, just type Leveling Up by Eric Sue, and then you can find me on Instagram at Eric O S I U. And that should be more than enough. And DM me if you have any questions. Always happy to help. 
Awesome. And we're going to try and get all, you mentioned a lot of links, a lot of resources. Oh, man, so we're going so to try good. and collect all of those, make sure that we put them in the show notes for this podcast yeah. that you can find. Sorry for whoever's managing it. <laughs> <laughs> nah, they love this stuff. <laughs> We can find that at staypaidpodcast.com. You can also find the video of this episode there. And if you're interested in supporting the show, just like James at the beginning of the show, leave us a review on iTunes. Leave a five-star uh, review and comment. That really helps uh, the podcast get recognized. And the best way is to tell a friend about the podcast. If you want to get hold of me or Luke, you can email us at podcast at remindermedia.com. Or you can find us on Instagram. We are at Stay Paid Podcast. For this episode of Stay Paid, I'm Joshua Stike. Yeah, so I'm Luke Acre, and I would encourage you go back, listen to this podcast again. There's so many things I, I was just thinking, and I tend to replay at the end of the podcast, like all these golden nuggets that I've heard throughout. But one of the things that we didn't even talk about was this idea of searching what was trending on Google and then using creating content of what's most popular happening. Yeah. I mean, that right Huge. there is unbelievable. So like, as I'm replaying the podcast in my mind, I'm like, oh my gosh, that we didn't even get into that and that would have been incredible so you know re-listen take notes but i think a very simple action item because if you don't take action on things you've heard you're going to keep living in the same bed that you've made. Like you got to do things differently in order to change your life and change your business. And i want to give you something simple and tangible because you might feel overwhelmed. Oh my goodness, there's so many ideas. Start posting on LinkedIn. We are seeing this with my LinkedIn, especially for all my financial advisors, real estate agents. And don't do broetry. Don't do the broetry <laughs> that he talked about, guys. Like, start posting valuable stuff on LinkedIn. And if you struggle with the content, you know, reach out to us. But really, this education, entertainment, or something that endears you to the community and to the people that follow you that they would have value in. Start posting on LinkedIn. The organic reach is unbelievable right now. Remember. The difference between a top producer and a mediocre producer in every industry we work in is top producers take action. So take action on that today. 